Hey guys, another TEAS lesson in life and physical sciences. So today we're going to go over some of the new requirements in TEAS for the basic macromolecules. So those are the, the big molecules that perform important functions in the biological system. So as usual, this is a comparison between learning objectives between the two versions of TEAS. And you can see in TEAS 6, it's about demonstrate knowledge of all the four different macromolecules, right? And then their functions. In TEAS 7, it hasn't changed that much. You still need to know the basic knowledge about all these macromolecules, and that includes the basic structure and function. But um, here I pointed out that there are two new objectives. The first is, even though it's old, T7 did list this as a separate objective. So there could be some new questions developed for just focusing on the structure of those molecules. And the second is how these macromolecules are synthesized and broken down. So that's a completely new learning objective. That's um, That wasn't in T6 at all. So today I'm going to focus on these two new or newish objectives. And uh, for the rest of the lesson, please um, go to the T6 version video on this same lesson. Um, that video covered most of our uh, most of the uh, requirements for this lesson. All right, so first we're going to look at how molecules are synthesized and broken down. So you guys probably already know this. Um, there are two very important terms that we're going to use a lot for this lesson, monomer and a polymer. So mono means one, mer means unit. So when we say monomer, we refer to a single subunit for a particular big biological molecule. So for instance, the monomer for, for proteins is amino acid, right? And the monomer for starch is glucose. Now, polymers are very large molecules and usually consist of many units of monomers. So they have this chain-like structures. Now, sometimes the chains are pretty long, um, like starch. Sometimes the chains are relatively short, not that long, like some of the uh, um, polypeptide chains. OK, now, when we need to synthesize large molecules, we have to use dehydration synthesis or condensation. Now, condensation is a term mentioned in T's uh, really, it's not in most of the biological textbooks. Um, so for T's, you do need to remember that um, if the question says condensation, that's pretty much the same as dehydration synthesis. So when you see this term synthesis, you know you're synthesizing right big molecules from smaller molecules. But sometimes the question um, kind of gets tricky. It only says dehydration. So uh, in this case, you need to remember that dehydration is associated with synthesis. Now, I'm going to explain why it's a dehydration synthesis, because dehydration, you're taking off um, water molecules. So it sounds like you're breaking something down instead of synthesizing, right? So I'll explain real quick on the next slide. And on the other hand, when we want to break down large molecules, we are going to use hydrolysis. Now, this is a relatively easy to remember because lysis, that means breaking down. So hydrolysis just means that you are using water molecules to break down large molecules to smaller molecules. Usually there are monomers. Okay, so this is a really good cartoon explaining the two processes. Okay. For dehydration synthesis or condensation, we have two small molecules, monomer one, monomer two, and we need to, with the hydroxyl group. Hydroxyl group is OH. So with the hydroxyl group on each end, these two monomers don't really have that free hand to hold on to each other. So we need to remove what's in the hand, right? So now the hand is available so that these two monomers can hold hands together and form a larger structure. So that's an analogy that I can think of. Uh, hopefully it makes sense to you. In chemistry terms, uh, when you have hydroxyl group at the end, uh, each of the monomers does not have that free electron to form 
uh, a bond, right? Remember, we need to have two electrons, right, to, to form one covalent bond. Okay? So with the hydroxyl group on the end, there's no free electrons. Okay? So we need to remove hydroxyl group from one monomer, and the other one, we only need to remove one hydrogen ion. So this way, each monomer will have a free electron available, and then those two electrons can form a covalent bond. So this is why we have to remove a water molecule. And it's really just OH from one monomer and the H hydrogen from the other monomer. So again, in order to put two small molecules together, you have to free the electrons. So you have to remove hydroxyl group and hydrogen. Now, in terms of uh, hydrolysis, it's really just the reverse of dehydration synthesis, right? So right now, the two monomers are holding hands together. So when you break that bond, then there are free electrons available now, right? Um, so with the free electrons, the two monomers are not stable. So you need to add something to kind of absorb that free electrons. So water is going to do that. Water is going to provide a hydroxyl group and a hydrogen ion. And then those two groups will, um, again, this is just analogy, kind of absorb the free electrons. And now the two monomers are stable. Okay. All right, so this is the processes on how a large molecule is synthesized or broken down. And I have seen a practice question on this. So uh, make sure you're familiar with these two processes. Okay, practice question. Which of the following processes occurs in digestion? Now you need to know what digestion is, right? In digestion, big macromolecules like carbohydrates, proteins, nucleic acids are broken down right, to smaller molecules so that they can absorb by the body. So this is about breaking down large molecules, which is the correct answer, hydrolysis. And the hydration, it really just means adding water, right? It doesn't really have any relevance um, in terms of this particular lesson. Number two. Now, to answer this question, you have to know first what glycogen is, right? Glycogen is a way for the body to store glucose. So glycogen is this large molecule made up of many, many glucose units. So it, it tends to kind of branch off and have a lot of uh, little chains, little branches that are all made up of uh, glucose. So when your body has low blood sugar, then um, the glycogen will be broken down to individual glucose, uh, which will be released into your bloodstream. So to, this will get your blood level back up, right? This is how um, um, homeostasis works. In order to produce glycogen, you have to put glucose, the monomers, together, right, to form glycogen. So this is a synthesis process. So the correct answer is A, dehydration, and B, condensation. Remember, T um, has two ways to um, address the, the synthesis process. Okay. 